Today, we're going to be talking about the top five biggest changes that the comic book industry has gone through over the years. This is happening right now, coming at you. Hello to my fellow Geekerinos, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. It's been a while, apologize, had to take a little bit of a hiatus, had some stuff going on, but I'm sure you really don't want to hear about my problems, so let's get into this video. If you go to your local comic book store and you pick up a comic book that was published within the last few years, you're going to notice a few things. You're going to notice some really jaw-dropping art, for the most part, and some really amazing, elaborate stories again, for the most part. But the comic book medium as a whole was not born like that. Over the years, the industry has gone through some really significant changes. And you really can see this when you compare modern day comic books to comic books that were published even say 30, 40 years ago. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that comic books today are significantly better than comic books that were published in the past. No, 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 no. They're just different. And the paradigm shifts that the comic book industry as a whole has gone through really, really illustrated when you compare comic books that are published today to those that were even published, say, 30, 40 years ago. And that is exactly what I wanted to discuss in a little bit of detail today, is those major significant paradigm shifts that have happened in the comic book industry over the years. And in all of my study of the comic book industry and its 80 plus year history, I have identified, at least in my opinion, five major paradigm shifts that have happened since the comic book industry as a whole was born in the 1930s. Now, this is not a countdown. Rather, these paradigm shifts that I'm going to be talking about appear in chronological order as they happen in actual time. So the first major paradigm shift or major change that the comic book industry went through was in 1938 with the release of Action Comics number one, which we all know as the first appearance of Superman and also probably the most valuable comic book of all time. But why is this major change so significant? Well, prior to 1938, comic books as you and I know them didn't really exist. Well, they existed but they weren't all new original stories. They were kind of like a trade paperback of the day. Comics and with original stories and art appeared in newspapers, not in actual books as we know them today. So comic books did exist, but they were essentially just reprints of newspaper strips. Publishers thought that they could make a little bit of extra cash by repackaging their comics that appeared in newspaper strips in these books that were sold on newsstand. As a matter of fact, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, the creators of Superman, originally did not even want to publish Superman in a comic book. What they wanted for themselves was their character to be published in newspapers because newspapers, newspaper comics, was where it was at back in the day. But after they failed so many times to get their idea published in newspapers, they basically took what they could get and they were offered a chance by DC to publish this character in a comic book. Turns out that Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster's Superman idea ended up being very, very popular. And Superman afterwards ended up getting a lot of company with respect to superheroes. What followed? Superman were dozens and dozens of superhero comics. Some that lasted and had a lot of longevity to the point where they're still published today and others that really just fell off the map after a few years. The next major change in the comic book industry happened around 1945. Now, I'm not saying that it all happened all at once, but I picked 1945 as the year for this big change because 1945 was the year that World War II ended. And with the end of World War II came many, many changes in the comic book industry. If you know a little bit about comic book history, you'll know that during World War II, superhero comics were really, really popular because people were looking to these heroes in these comics as their own saviors. And they looked at these heroes as these characters that were helping the US win the war. But once the war was over, that was really it. The world didn't need Superman anymore. The world didn't need Batman or any other superheroes anymore because there weren't any enemies left to fight. And what ended up happening was a lot of superhero books ended up being canceled. 
the only superheroes that really survived in the post-war years were Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. But if there weren't any superhero books left to read, what were people actually reading then? Well, this was the time where the industry started experimenting with different genres. You see horror comics and crime comics and teenage dramas and romances, westerns, all these new different genres that people were paying more attention to as opposed to superhero comics. Horror comics and crime comics were especially popular in the post-war years. There was kind of like a, a race and major intense competition with the comic book industry with horror and crime comics because EC Comics was just killing it with their Tales from the Crypt books and their crime suspense stories and all, all of the these amazing comics that they were putting out at the time. For our next major paradigm shift that happened in the comic book industry, we have to fast forward to 1961 with the release of the Fantastic Four number one. This is a book that we have talked about on the channel before, and it is a very, very important book. Not just because this was the height of the Silver Age of comics, and uh, it, there was this new, renewed love and attention being given to superheroes, but this book really illustrated this major paradigm shift that happened in the comic book industry in which greater complexity was being given to comic book characters. Before 1961, superhero characters for the most part were really kind of one-dimensional. Superman was good, Lex Luthor was bad. Superman stopped Lex Luthor and saves the day. And the stories really, there wasn't that much to them. They were kind of bland and, and, and black or white and they're, there just really wasn't a lot that was cognitively stimulating with the stories that appeared in the Golden Age, for the most part. The other thing about the superheroes that appeared in the Golden Age is you weren't really learning a lot about them personally. So when the Fantastic Four comes along, you start seeing some differences with these types of characters. These these characters now have problems. They have issues. They 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 some of them don't even like having the powers that they have, and I'm thinking especially The Thing. And then of course comes Peter Parker, who is literally the poster boy for Heroes with Problems. He is Spider-Man, and he has these amazing abilities that if he was able to share his identity with a lot of these girls that he liked, they probably would think he was pretty amazing and really kind of give him the time of day. But with great power comes great responsibility, and he knows that he cannot share his identity with anybody because that would put the people he cares about in danger. Wow, this is just really compelling stuff, and it was unlike anything that anybody at the time had seen before. It's because of characters like Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four that Marvel, at least in my opinion, really kind of blew DC out of the water in the 1960s. Now, I'm not hating on DC. I love DC Comics, and I, I they put out some great stuff in the in the late 60s and the, in the early 70s too. Uh, but for the most part, I believe that Marvel did a stellar job with their comics in the 1960s and really kind of gave DC a run for their money. Now the next kind of mini change that I want to talk about, which isn't necessarily not number four, it's more of a notable mention. So let's call it 3.5, and that is in 1973 with the release of Amazing Spider-Man number 121. This is the infamous death of Gwen Stacy issue. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because in comic books before 1973, people didn't really die. I mean, people died, but significant characters didn't really die. So now we have this shift in 1973 where stories start becoming darker and people actually start dying in comic books. For our number four big change that the comic book industry went through, we're going to now go to 1985. And 1985 was a watershed year in comic books with the release of The Dark Knight Returns and the release of Watchmen. And we know these are basically sacred texts when it comes to comic books, uh, but why? Why are these books so influential besides being really, really great reads? Well, the release of Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns kind of marked this shift of the comic book industry becoming less for children and more for adults. Because even to this day, there's still kind of that stereotype that comic books are more for children rather than adults. And this stereotype 
back in the 1980s was even more prominent than it is today. But with the release of these books, you could clearly tell that, okay, this is not stuff that kids should be reading. But not only that, the characters that appeared in Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns were very morally ambiguous. And they were darker, a lot darker than anything we had ever seen before. This was also a time in which there was greater focus on anti-heroes, not just the anti-hero Batman or the, the characters that we see in Watchmen, but also the Punisher. Now, the Punisher first appeared in the 1970s, but he rose in popularity significantly during this time, as well as dark characters like Wolverine. What followed these books was a slew of comics that were superficially dark and violent and really hyper-masculine. And this trend kind of started in 1985 and went through the 1990s. The comic book industry felt that dark was in, but a lot of times these books were unnecessarily dark. And I think that the industry kind of missed the point that Frank Miller and Alan Moore with their, with the, what kind of points they were trying to make with their works. And our fifth and last major paradigm shift that I feel happened in the comic book industry happened in 2014 with the release of Miss Marvel number one. Now, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this because this is a topic that I feel that we have really kind of exhausted on this channel. But with the release of Miss Marvel number one, I feel that the comic book industry experienced this shift in which they were paying more attention to characters from diverse backgrounds. Now, this greater focus on characters coming from diverse backgrounds really got a lot of fan backlash. And I really don't know what's going on right now in comic books because I'm not reading any new comic books and I haven't touched a new comic book probably since 2016. But I have a feeling, and from what I've heard, this kind of trend is still prominent in the comic book industry. And you definitely can see it in the comic book films that have been coming out uh, recently. Again, we've talked quite in depth about this topic in uh, previous videos. And if you're really interested in this topic, I would encourage you to uh, check out the videos that we did on social justice warrior, quote unquote, comics uh, on the channel. So those are the five most important paradigm shifts or major changes that have happened in the comic book industry, in my opinion. I would love to hear from you. Let me know what you think are some of the most important points in time that marked a huge change in the comic book industry. And also let me know what do you think will be the next major change that the comic book industry goes through. So that about does it for our video today. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this, please check out the channel. Also, subscribe if you can. And don't forget to leave a like. Really, really helps me out. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.